So this book is 8,000 square meters. And in the back, there's the data area. In the front, there's the wireless area, the data, the, the, all the data centers. And here's the other. In front is the 5G area. Here we have the small cells. 4.5G, which is unique to um, Kuwait. Internet things in the back, connected car, and the entrance. Beautiful. Okay, this is a really big hall, and all the visitors, of course, are being checked in in a nice way. And it's absolutely huge. And there's a lot of people here, so let's uh, take a look. I'm first going to go into um, indoor coverage. Let's start at the beginning. Giga Radio. See, these are the base stations. And what they're showing here is the beam. The beam forming, of course, gigabit stuff, but they do it with 4G. And for example, this base station has 46 times 46 radios and antennas. And the same hardware, the white person told me, is usable for 5G. You don't have to change hardware. So and this is the normal uh, gigabit story, but they do, the, the thing they say is you can buy this hardware and use it for 5G without changing the hardware. Another big subject is uh, small cells, expanding mobility, and they've got some nice products and a nice de and demo. And here we have a nice cell, it has four antennas, and here is a demo of the heat map of all the local um, stations, how many people are here. At the moment, 155 current uh, visitors are checked in. 1,000 cumulative average visit time in minutes is 64 minutes. So this is Huawei, 4.5 uh, gigabit or 4.5G connected, and it has a lot of advantages, just pre-5G. They have implemented it in Hong Kong. And what's the advantages of 4.5? The, the concept of 4.5G consists in extending the capacity of LTE in yeah. terms of throughput, latency, and connectivity. The, the capacity, the throughput we can sell to the customer is one gigabit per second. Uh -huh. We're introducing also one gigabit per, per second. second. One and gigabit. what do you need to change in your network to make that happen? You need to take into consideration three factors. Take into consideration three factors. First of all, 4x4 four four MIMO. Second, modulation. 256 QAM and three component uh, carrier aggregation, at least three component carriers are needed for this. Uh -huh. So is that a big investment if you are already on 4G or is it a small... It's, uh, not, it's not a big investment because it's a combination of software or the hardware, but it depends on what you already have. Okay. I, I can tell you what you, yeah. what you need. And what is it, where does it work here? Where does it work already, 4.5G? It Hon works in Hong Kong? It was in Hong Kong, it was in LGU Plus, it works in... United, Korea? In the United Kingdom. Yeah, LGU Plus is, is Korea, it's the best network in the, in the world. It yeah. was in China, it was in Japan, it was in many places. Okay. And are the phones already, uh, can they be used uh, for that? Are yes. there phones which already support yeah. such a high throughput? Yes, yes. The, what you have to... Hawaii, yeah. What, what you have to consider, this is our, our Huawei phone, of course. Yeah, this is the Huawei phone, and that supports also already 4.5. What you, what you need to take care of your devices of the ecosystem is that the combination of the component carriers you have in your carrier aggregation are supported by your device. Yeah. You don't want to play with carriers that you cannot filter with. Yeah. And on the other hand, by 4x4 four four MIMO, you need four antennas. But normally the devices only have two. Okay, so four, does... antennas, four antennas in the device are necessary. But how does it work? Because normally you have two RF antennas yeah. and two Wi-Fi antennas. Yeah. So the Wi-Fi antennas are combined or are, are recycled for RF antenna okay. to be able to use 4x4 four four MIMO. Okay, they also demonstrate here the narrowband IoT. Yeah. And a lot of devices here, which are shown, have battery life of 10 years. Yeah. So water meters. And also the deep coverage. So interesting is also that these IoT devices need 20 dB less uh, strength signal to work. So they work in much lower power. Francisca, what is Litra? No, look at me. What is Litra? Litra is the trunk radio system Huawei has implemented 
for critical communication. For example, these communications between policemen, firefighters, taxi drivers. Uh -huh. So the end customer is the government itself. Uh -huh. Okay. But that goes over LTE or is it special quality it, of service? No, it's, it's, it's goes over LTE and basically it's a push-to-talk system, like a walkie-talkie, all right? Yeah. But enabling video and location uh, services. Ah. You can share video, you can make group video calls, and also you can activate all the units close to a geographical disaster with location-based system. Okay. okay, so how do we go from this good old speed, 150 megabits, to 300, 400, and into one gigabit? So how do you do that? Well, as we, as we mentioned, we need to play Look at me. with the carrier aggregation. We need three component carriers, yeah. four by four MIMO, and 256 quam in the modulation standpoint. Uh -huh. So by definition, 150 megahertz yeah, is the 150. speed of the LTE itself. Yeah. And now we're going to play with these parameters to see how the, the speed increases. OK, so first. So uh, you can open the frame. OK. So for example, now, yeah. increasing the he's, carrier He's now Double. increasing carrier adequation. OK, and it goes to 300 megabits. OK, then you play with? Mine. With MIMO, you increase MIMO, four by four now. and it goes by 4x4, four by four, and it goes to 600 MIMO. And then we also increase the modulation, modulation is 64 to 256, and then voila! We need one more. Yep. And we're going to carry aggregation free, and we're ending up at 1.2 gigabit. So those are the three components which you need to get to that speed. Carry aggregation. MIMO and the modulation. So I heard that with this base station, which has 64 times 64 cameras, you can already use, uh, which is ready for 5G. How can you, by the standard is not ready, how can you say that this hardware is useful for 5G? Look at me. There is no, there is no how to build 5G, but there is how, there is a picture of how 5G will look like. Yeah. So we know now that in order to offer 10 gigabits per second, 5G requirement from definition, yeah. we need to provide massive MIMO. The first antenna in the market that is actually providing massive MIMO is that one, 64T, 64R. Another thing that we have to introduce in, in the future 5G is the cloud-based station concept. Uh -huh. Many BBUs go together in one rack to improve coordination. And we also have this, the first cloud-based station compatible with 5G right there. Okay. This cloud based, this, which one? This one. This two are family compatible. Actually, we invest in the cloud. This cloud based station is compatible already with 5G. Okay. And the antenna. And the antenna, okay. So, this is all part of Landsight. This, uh, this Pico cell is a part of Landsight. What is Landsight? Landsight is an indoor solution intended for massive deployment in those scenarios such as football stadium, airports, shopping malls. You expect a high amount of users that will suffer a huge decrease in the user experience. Uh -huh. So, you need to introduce more power in your LTE network, 3G network and Wi-Fi optionally to push that effort on. Okay. okay, and this is the uh, this is uh, sort of the dashboard view which shows uh, how that uh, how that works. Lamsa is the Lamsa, as you can see here, is the indoor solution with higher efficiency when you are increasing the number okay. of users, which is important. So when the number of uh, users is increasing, the speed of Lamsa's system stays much more higher than with Wi-Fi or with DAS. And, and, the, and the indoor experience is much much better. And the, uh, and the, and the antennas for that this particular solution. Lampside, uh, lampside, lamp look, like look like this. And there are four, there are four antennas in there, right? Yeah, it's like this. It's, it's divided in four different slots, and you can place in any of them the technology you want, including Wi-Fi. It can be LTE FDD, LTE TDD, 3M, uh, 3G or 2G. Then, power over the Ethernet. Yeah. You connect it to a remote half, and from here with fiber, it goes to the BBU. Okay. Is it easy to install this something like this? Can a building is or a, a, an operator of a building can they do it themselves? It's an almost almost plug and play solution. Okay. Okay. License assisted access, which is a carrier aggregation between LTE and Wi-Fi as well. It's okay. Important. LAA. What is that? License assisted access is a 3 BBS standard technology that we're always implementing this year. Massive deployment is expected for for next year and allows uh -huh. the lamp size solution. So if the phone supports it, 
it can automatically switch from LTE to Wi-Fi or no, back no, no, and no. forth? No, no, you have your LTE assigned because the spectrum is yours. Yeah. So you will always have LTE yeah. communication. Yeah. Then you make a kind of a carrier aggregation with the unlicensed spectrum as long as nobody is using Wi-Fi. We have the technology called yeah. Listen Before Talk. Yeah. That as long as there is no user using Wi-Fi, you can take all these resources and to yeah. add it as another pipe. And then you have LTE over Wi-Fi frequency. Yeah, but that's a different story. Yeah. By the way. So these visitors are the visitors which are connected through Vodafone uh, Spain. They have already implemented this um, solution so that you can see where everybody is. And it can also say which booth the visitors are. So there's indoor, there's indoor um, pointing, positioning, and the visitors there. So why do we have here a little red cell? It's interesting. Because here, there's 40 phones streaming HD video. Yes, it's HD video. YouTube. And they're using, for example, YouTube. And all of them, 40 of them, are basically using LAMP side. And they still have very good performance, very good speed. And that basically creates the red dot. So here we have an example of Litra, push to talk and push to video. And this is a demonstration. So we can see it here. This is a walkie-talkie, the good old walkie-talkie effect. Which is a, it's and a, it's a Sony device. Smart LTE phone. The Sony uh, smartphone LTE, yeah. With an application. Yeah. Yes. With an application, and you can just press the button and then basically oh. have a uh, push to talk uh, thing. Yes. Can, can Which is extremely popular in a lot video? of places. Yes. So this is especially for government uh, emergency situations, everybody's running to it, and I can now... Oh, wow! Help, this is help the operator. Is this real time? Yeah, yeah. it's real time. Ooh. Ooh. Transmit outside. through he's the... Outside, he's outside the... Uh, Vodafone's live LTE network. The Vodafone oh, live oh, LTE yeah, network? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, and I can also push the talk with him, and he can see me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Hi, can I see you? <laughs> can you switch cameras? Uh, this is, uh, you know, the one too many, the one way, one way, oh, one too many. No one, right, oh, right. he cannot hear us in this, uh, in this case, <laughs> okay. We can talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, because, you know, more and more government, they intend to use operators, LT network to, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. to uh, deploy the national public safety network. Okay, cool. In really interesting. Yeah. And it runs over LTE uh, standards. What do you need to implement Litra? The only requirement you need to add in your network is in the core part, install a PTT server, push to talk server. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Does it only work in Huawei infrastructure or can this solution also be implemented in other uh, networks? The solution we sell is for a Huawei network. Okay. So now we've covered about a quarter of the whole. And I'm showing. We have some really nice, <laughs> fantastic hospitality. Okay, this area is making the city uh, safer, and you have the right tools for the job. Eh? <laughs> Let me take a picture with you. Yeah. Can I be in between? It's a video. It's a video. Okay. It's a video. I feel so much Safe. Enjoy Mobile World Congress Barcelona. <laughs> oh, life is wonderful. Thank you. So what happens if I have a disaster or some kind of a war zone area? What do I do? And, and you want to have a Litra yeah. service. You throw this box from a helicopter? From a helicopter I throw this box yeah. completely it, yeah, it, it down. Re it, it resists the impact and you have here the RRU, you have here the BBU, and this is the push to talk server that you should add in your core part. So it's already integrated uh -huh. and, and before that you can send your units to the server, the, the units to that area. Okay, and where do I connect it to? Where, where, where does it connect? I mean, I throw it out of the helicopter, yeah. but it needs to connect to connectivity somewhere. It, 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 well, this internet, it goes to your network. Yeah, and it's okay, so your... somewhere there needs to be some kind of a giga or something. But this is an instant service wherever you want it, as long as you have internet connectivity to this box. You are throwing it from a helicopter, yeah? No, I'm throwing <laughs> it from a helicopter, but then, oh, then it doesn't need any internet uh, to no. this service to operate. No, no, it, is, it does start working because you yeah. turn it on on the helicopter. But it's only for, <laughs> it's only for emergency. <laughs> then the yeah, emergency no. service start to work you make for sure, the yeah. make, make sure you turn it on before you throw it from the helicopter. Yeah. After, after that, it's working. Okay. okay. <laughs>
So here we see a demo of the virtualized converge command system. Well, the normal things which we expect. Cameras, support and control. And dispatcher platform. Okay, how can the telcos capture this 42 billion IoT market? And we see here for high bandwidth, low bandwidth, and ultra low bandwidth. Of course, we want deep coverage, massive connections, low power, and low device costs. Some of the things you can use is tracking, anything with the automobile industry, the environment, water supply, everything with agricultural stock, and the companies they work together with, T-Mobile, Vodafone, China, and a lot of ecosystem partners. Okay, here we have the smart mirror, which is cute. She has a good score, you can turn lights and off, lamps light and on and off. Okay, so here we have some examples of the Internet of Things, a smart valve, a parking sensor. Now that I want in every parking spot in the whole world. And of course, a pet tracker, although it looks also very usable as a child tracker. I asked how much is the price for something like this and uh, he says well the chipset is five dollars but of course the battery and the casing etc no price yet so nice comfortable place lots of room light and people so the vision of Hawaii of the connected car 1.5 billion vehicles by, two point, uh, by 2015 and then you can add fleet management, UBI, telematics, and get 60 billion industry in 2020. Of course, we can have the online dispatch, which I use every day with my taxi. Security, geofencing, traffic index, very important. Time saving. And all this is possible, which comes out of the fleet management system and which they provide with a partner. So this is the FMS, the fleet management system, which is provided with a partner and a dongle. They put it a dongle. So they put a dongle in every car. And then of course you can see where all the cars are, the driving records and see it. So here's some communication modules, which who I works with from Audi and from Toyota and Lexus. So this box, I need to install. So in order to support IoT, what do I need this box for? On the BBU, you need to install one board, which is this one. Yep. And that's it. And then you can support all these IoT solutions, all the low power. All the, all the chipsets will be able to communicate with your network. And at the end, you also need to install in your core part a server application, uh, application server in case that you don't have it. Okay, what about security? Does this box also arrange the security? Of course. Okay. So, 5G is of course a very big uh, thing. We have here the architecture, which is described, which I really don't understand anything about. But we have a cloud native architecture. Exactly. I guess that's really very important. What is what does that mean? Yeah, the
Let's, let's, uh, let me feed you this uh, same. Okay, so here we have network slicing. And I saw this demo on T-Mobile that was really interesting. You can slice the network any way you want to. What kind of uh, choose, choices do I have? So for example, we, we pick up this service, okay? Yeah. Metering slice template, yeah. So the network will define its own way to run the service. In this yeah. case, we want to have as much as possible connected, yeah. And we also want the battery life of this to be as much okay, as so we can choose a battery life, how many connections per square kilometer, and the bandwidth this is, is very low. This is yeah. fixed because of the so demonstration. Typical, yeah. But the critical point is yeah. to see how the network changes. Okay. And defining the service. Let me see if I can do it. Can you do it, please? Yeah. Yeah. And it changes. For ah. example, the user plane disappears. The user plane disappears because, because now I want 10 year batteries and 1 it's million an, per kilometers. It's an so then you can only do. And container we, um, and we print it and our network okay. will be modified to that wow so you instant modify you instant modify the network based on the latency the speed the battery things and you can just bang define it and there it goes and the network operates that and you can make a slice that is the demonstration here but how it works in real life is the network knowing the service is going to run we adjust everything the specification and also the core part Both. okay great demo and you can have lots of different networks uh, yeah yeah, yeah but, but so the base station but, can but, we but, can have a slice we can have a slice so you can have 10 or 100 or 1000 or how many of those can you have for sure there is a limitation but this is not relevant okay and of course we have a vr demo so let me see so I see a 3D uh, camera where I can basically look around and see in 3D. So somebody, uh, somewhere there's a camera. Let's see, where's my camera? And you can basically see in 3D, you have a virtual reality uh, thing. Where is the camera? Oh, that's the camera over there. Yes, yes. So this is the example which we just demonstrated for it to combine to make the network slice and dice to be able to track a lot of Internet of Things. We need a special slicing network for that, and this is nicely illustrated this way. <laughs> so, does it cost uh, based on what night network I slice for myself and for my devices? The operator will charge me certain cost. The cost is depending on what kind of requirements you ask in terms of bandwidth, in terms of uh, latency, etc. And different networks can have different prices. Exactly. Be, 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 when you talk about network, it's not the right word because you need to talk about service. Uh -huh. Different services yeah. have different prices. Okay. Dif so but one network, but different you only, services. You, you only build one network and the network offers different devices, different services. Yeah, yeah. And so, if I then define a service like that, how does the device know this is my particular service? Is in somewhere the service, is the, uh, the, uh, the, the different device numbers, are they uh, taken into account? Do you have to register those devices with their numbers on that particular service? Those devices are built for a reason, uh, are built to meet a service, are yeah. built to, to, to make their job, let's say. Is responsibility of the network to analyze in real time which user, which device is connecting to the network and what he wants to do. Uh -huh. Once it realizes, it readjusts internally the capabilities of the network itself, but this user was made for that reason and for that service will be charged. Okay, wonderful. So here we see the example of how everything is tracked and traced. And so we have two different slices of network. This one is low latent, is latency, low power, and low bandwidth. And they had a VR example, was a slicing example of high throughput and low latency, and, uh, but a lot of power. Okay. Now, let's see if Guido knows how to play smarter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think these robots need to become a lot faster. That's really, uh, they're not much of a candidate. Come on, win, win. Don't be so nice. Uh, Do it. Huh? More difficult than yes. Really?
Let's see what this is. Experience Driven Ultra Broadband Network. Wow, what a lot of services. So what is the idea? The idea is to standardize what we are calling Experience ben Benchmark. This is the UV MOS. The UV MOS 3 and the UV MOS 4? Is what we are trying to standardize. Huawei believes that we need to focus on the user experience to run our business and the only way we think that we can measure the quality of the networks in real time is with this concept, UV MOS. MOS what does UV MOS mean? Is universal video mean opinion score. Universal? Universified, universified video yeah. and also voice, okay? Mean opinion score. Oh. Mean opinion score, how does it work? Mean opinion score. Uh, a score, as it is, three letter MOS, yeah. it's a 20 years old concept oh. that try to explain how good the communication is. Starting with voice, five, the maximum you can get is a face-to-face -face communication. Uh -huh. So this is impossible technologically. Yeah. We're trying to provide four, which is a really good value, uh -huh. okay. mixing voice and video. Okay, more easier and instant and uh, no latency and that kind of stuff, okay. Yeah, yeah, because in user experience, it's not only about the data throughput, it's not about the capability, but about the waiting time, the buffering yeah. time, and so on. Okay, so that's what you try to measure the, the values in different cities across the world. Oh, you have basically done research how good is the human communication. Seoul is very high, 3.8, Tokyo 3.4, Shanghai. Hong Kong, four, Bangkok 3.3, 4 is really good, four is really good. Three but is a, three. Sydney is 3.6, and let's see if they have Europe here, Mexico City 3.3, three. and Rio de Janeiro 3.1, I wonder if Europe comes, Europe comes, yeah. Europe come. Will Europe come? Because I mean, I want to know where we are. Oh, there we are. Amsterdam, 3.5. London, 3.5. So, 3.5 is good. So, which one does 4.0? Uh, which city? Yeah. I don't know the values of all the cities. No 4.0 yet. Yeah, we have trials, but not in the whole city network. In small networks, small cases. Okay. In the world, so, this is a way to measure, to objectify this, the quality of the uh, the quality of the connection, and we can see that here. Back to, back to home, and I can also do the speed test, do the test live, preparing the video, sending it out, testing the ping. Now this is this is the way to do it. Okay, this was wrong. This is the way to do it. Okay, I start. Okay, and at the moment we have. A very high quality. Five is the maximum. Yeah, five is the maximum. Here we see the video, the server, the resolution, the bit rate, 4.6. So, and here we have speed test. I mean, that's what I use always. But you say that's not normalized. That no. is, no, no. That is not a good. That is not a comparison. A good it, comparison. That's an uh, in independent company. Yes, doesn't mean anything. Measuring the value. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So they prepare a standardized way to measure quality of voice, video, and data. So buffering time. So they want to have a, they want to have a real human life, not not technical stuff, but things which humans really can appreciate. One number for all the different things. Now the nice thing is, if you have one number, you can basically make heat maps and say exactly how your network is performing in a standardized way. You know, you're born for video traffic, 1000p current. Okay. Okay. The, the cast, this, this is a th three steps work. Yeah. Customer approaches and say, okay, I want to run this service. It depends on the service, like high definition service over my city, and I cannot. We study, we make this map with a virtualization tool who splits your city yeah. in a 50 meter, 50 meter grid. Yeah. Okay. And then we know what you want. Okay. And we know what you have. So you want this, but you have this. Yeah. We, we call this imbalance the gap. Okay. So when and then you immediately have a shopping list what you need to solve your problem. Exactly. <laughs> but we are but this gap analysis is the second step. Yeah. And the third one is the solution proposal. There are many solutions that can cover your gap depending on the scenario, and we will propose to the customer, and the customer will will decide which direction to take. Yeah. Very handy.
analysis, say where you want to be, and uh, start shopping. Yeah. No, I want voice over LTE as soon as possible. Yeah, as soon. You know, it's like, uh, so let me ask you. Yeah. No, anyway. So they show here the voice over LTE demo. And uh, it's an incredible difference if you do it over low or over LTE. How long do you think it will take before that LTE, uh, voice over LTE is accepted with high uh, quality? It's, al it's already available. We have commercial cases over voice over, in voice over LTE. Yeah, where is it already implemented? We have many cases. Yeah, uh, but still, I mean... Commercial cases in voice over LTE we have across Europe, no? Yeah. Vodafone Ita Italy yeah. has it, yeah. I think also Vodafone Germany has it. They've also implemented it, but... I think we have around 20 cases only in Europe. So, that was it. And, uh, this was the end of the demo. And this was the end of the wireless uh, part. This part is all about data center, cloud, open cloud service areas, places where you cannot go without being invited. Let's take a look. Hello, I'd love to have a cup of coffee. Of course, make a normal phone call to the coffee machine and it will ask me which kind of flavor is my favorite. Cappuccino. Let me try. Hello, my coffee. Hello. Okay. Cappuccino. Let's see. She asked for cappuccino. And there it is. So you call up your cappuccino machine and you ask for the coffee and it makes it. <laughs> of course. Of course. Only at Huawei, a connected coffee machine which talks to you, which you can call up. How the internet started. Okay, next to that is the industry largest petabit core router. So um, that's totally different than a coffee machine, but it's also a lot of fun. And a switch with very low power, 320 terabit switching capacity, and a nice visualization. So that also is, um, is demonstrated. And it sounds like Guido found a nice mirror. Yeah, found my mirror. Let's see here. Yeah, I show a beauty consultant. Oh, yeah, the beauty consultant needs to yeah. say that uh, his hair really yeah. needs yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> okay. I think that's my PA, and uh, we're preparing the schedule for today. Actually, he's telling me what to do. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. So we have a data center, open cloud. Yeah, it looks um, it looks like a very cool data center with nice visualization, nice controller, all the switches, all the different servers, unified storage. And the Kunlun 9032, a mission critical server. Okay. Hot swappable, I presume. And the number one, much better than IBM, HP, or anybody else. And including RAS. So it's very nicely, it looks very nicely, the open cloud. Open architecture without vendor lock-in, also, well. Wow. Mm. Lots of meeting up and there. Nice open environment. Here's the partners, which they work with. The ecosystem. Intel, SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, the usual, Citrix, the usual suspects. Mm. Do you support open source Augustrum? 
Linux Foundation. Okay, so they're even paying attention to open source here, which is something else. Agile B2B service providing servicing. So that is nice. 30 days, 1 day, 7 days, 10 days, 12 days. But after that, it's not 30 days, but 20 minutes. 2 minutes. Instead of 1 day, 2 minutes. Instead of 7 days, 10 minutes. And the consumer can enjoy instead of 12 days in 8 minutes. So the different aspects of the business can be much more agile and much more quick. This is what I'll just make a picture of it. See, how much fun can a UPS be? You can really see, make nice visualization, makes all the difference. So the quality of the food looks nice. But nothing special. Ik heb een bankoffice en dan die kopie van die Ericsson stand, die poster die ze als kopie van de Ericsson stand hebben behangen. Moeten we dan ook even beelden hebben? Nou ja, maar het is leuk om even te laten zien van... Uh... Oké, okay, ik heb het wel gezien. Uh, heb jij het ook wel gezien? Ja. So this book is 8,000 square meters and in the back there's the data area, in the front there's the wireless area, the data, the, the, all the data centers and here's the other, and in front is the 5G area, here we have the small cells, 4.5G which is unique to um, Kauai, internet things in the back, connected car and the entrance. Beautiful booth.